Okay, you should have a couple of topics or an area of interest in mind. Now we need to learn a bit more about these so we can choose a direction for our research. We're still talking about the first part of the research process, but we are focusing now on the second step, getting background information. This means doing a little poking around to learn more about the area you're interested in. This is probably the easiest step in the whole process because it's something I'm sure you're doing already, at least to some extent. Looking for background information on your topic will help you decide if this is really something you want to research, and you'll learn what interesting issues are out there on the subject. This is called getting a working knowledge of your topic. You do this all the time already. When you want to learn a bit more about something, you just jump into Google, right? This is not the stage where you become an expert on your chosen topic. You're just getting a feel for what's out there. We'll be using Google and some library resources to do this. William Badkey, the author of the Required Research Strategies book, says that you have a working knowledge of your topic when you can talk about it for one minute without repeating yourself. So, after going through some of the background information resources this week, give that a shot. Why do we bother with this step? Why don't we just jump into the databases once we have our topic? Well, the initial topic you selected in our first step is almost never well formed. It's either too broad or it's too narrow, and these will both lead to a frustrating research experience. So you can use this initial search to learn about the issues and controversies related to your topic. You'll also find things you didn't know about, which may help lead you down a path you find interesting. When I was a hospital librarian, I did this every day because I was almost always given topics to research that I knew next to nothing about. There's no shame in that. It's hard to research something intelligently until you get up to speed with at least the basics. So, where can you find background information? Both librarians and your professors frown on the use of some free online resources, like Wikipedia, as research paper sources. But these are fine to use when developing a working knowledge of something you're not very familiar with. The library has a lot of resources that can help as well. Encyclopedias are often overlooked these days, but they are a great place to find an overview of something you might not know much about. Look through the background information section of this week's Moodle page for links to some of the ISU Library's online encyclopedias. I strongly recommend using the Gale Virtual Reference Library because it has so much. Now it's time to have some fun. This is low stakes searching, people. Almost all these sources are just for you to learn more about your topic, not for using in your actual paper. I want you to get background information both from a free source like Google or Wikipedia and from a library reference source like the Gale Virtual Reference Library. Again, links to helpful library sources are on this week's Moodle page. Take about an hour or so and learn a bit about your topic. Then respond to the questions in the forum. If at any point in the process you feel like this, remember to reach out to me or your classmates. I am a trained professional over here and I want you to have a topic that works for you. I may tell you to hold on until we complete all the steps this week before switching to something else because some of the exercises we'll be doing next may help get you unstuck.